everyone from week five this week until the end of the semester we will be mostly working with data so we read data and then do some processing visualization and stuff like that which is something I think you will find interesting and you will enjoy it you have so many great applications uh, the first one we'll do is related to grade if, if you're uh, you have the grade of your assessment you need to find the total the average the distribution and stuff like that and there's so many things uh, in, uh, in in business and uh, engineering IT uh, so many applications health science huge application for data analytics and the data analytics is one of the fast growing jobs uh, in internationally so we will get the student a sense of how to work with data and later hopefully they will uh, continue uh, do, doing that so working with data require reading data from um, big files or large files with thousands of records and in that case um, if you keep reading the data every time uh, it's it's little bit uh, time consuming um, Rebellet is a great tool but it has a disadvantage uh, when you run uh, a large application especially with the large data uh, your application will run as a whole so every time it will do everything from beginning to the end but in data analytics important to create segments of your code one that read the data once you read the data, it's available on the memory of your computer. Then you can use another segment to do the processing, another one to do the visualization. And this way, you don't need to run it all. If you want to run the processing, you keep running the processing, change your parameters, do something. But you don't need to read the data again because it's already available for you. Uh, Ripple it cannot do that at the moment. And I'm talking to them and I think they will find a solution it's not really uh, difficult for them to do it uh, but until they do that we will move to industry standard application they call it Jupyter uh, uh, notebook we have a subscription with uh, Microsoft so we have full access for every student and every faculty I will show you how we get access uh, to that so we start by going to uh, our uh, BBLearn course and the link is there. So you go to BBLearn course, you will get uh, BBLearn hopefully coming quickly. Which network I am in? Yeah, I'm in the right one. Uh, so it's coming now, taking some few minutes. Okay, now we are on our PB Learn, and you go down, you'll find our course. This is our course. You see, the name of the course is uh, Master ICT. It's not a master program. We call it master because we will use it later to create the course in in the spring. Um, so it's where we put all our uh, data. So if you click on it, then you get into the main page. And in the main page, you can see all these weeks we have here. And uh, and so far, we've done four weeks. Now we'll jump to week five. I need to edit this one. Now here, there is the software that I want you to see. So if you click on software, you will find link to Ripple it, which we use from week one to week four. And then a new link to Azure Jupyter Notebook. Uh, week 5 to week 15 and if I click on this I get to the uh, Jupyter uh, to the Azure uh, from Microsoft <clears throat> so this is the screen and I'm lo already logged in let me just log out if I'm, I'm logged out and go back here and click then I get a screen like this I will get access to everything I can run the code uh, everything is fine I can see it but I cannot edit or do anything because I'm not logged in 
yeah but i can open the application and see how it uh, come on the screen and and everything but the problem is i cannot run it because i don't own it and i cannot edit it so i have to sign in to sign in it's very simple you use your hct email and password because it's connected to our active directory similar to uh, office 365 so we just click on this you get to log in i already logged in and now i am on the same place but if i go to ict 2103 i'm in week five and here there are two files i have one is an excel sheet that has a record of the students and one is an example that I created called course result. Just I'll take you through that and you'll see it. But before I do that, if you click any file, it will be shaded like that. And there are a number of things you can do with that file. Like you can run it, you can edit it, you can preview, and you can <coughs> clone it. So if this file is not your file, you can clone it and edit it and do whatever you want to do with it um, and so on uh, then if you want to start a new one you click here and then it will ask you for a name of your application uh, you can upload it from computer if you have or from a URL which you have or you create a new one just to give a name for it here and select the latest one which 3.6 uh, three, uh, three point six. That the one we need to use. So we're not creating one now. Let's open this one. Uh, so I explained to you uh, uh, how it works. Now it's it cells. This is one cell. Now if I click here, I get another cell. I get a third cell, and so on. I delete it. Why deleting it like that? So these cells are my code will be put into different cells. And every time I want to run a cell, just I select the cell and run it. Now here I'm, I'm doing something that we will explain during our class on, on Thursday and explain the details. I'm basically reading an Excel file using something called Pandas. We'll come to that detail. My Excel file, this is the name of it. And it has a sheet called Sheet 1. So if I run this one, and the way to run it in, in a Jupyter Notebook, you press Control, Enter. Now this one run, and you can see there is one, because I did run it once. If I do Control, Enter again, it will become two. So I did run it twice. Now this data is ready. If I want to display it, which we will come back to it in our uh, lesson, but this is just giving you an idea about the Jupyter Notebook, I can use data. This is the name of the variable storing the data. Dot head. Head basically displays the first uh, five rows in your data. So this is my data. It has a student ID or different IDs, and they have some score for question one, question two, question three. That's if I want to run head five, I can run head ten. If I want to get the first ten, so this will display for me the first ten. And that is the first one starting by zero. I can in another cell say data and take the tail, tail the end of the data, the last five uh, records on your data, and so on. I can come here and do. See, I don't need to run this one again. I run it just once, and then I start using those uh, cells to create. Uh, uh, some additional uh, processing so that the way it works now you can click on save to save it it saves it by default but it's good to click save just to make sure uh, it is done here on the top you have things that allow you to create a new one a new a new notebook or new program or open an existing one or make a copy of the first one clone it again or rename it to different name and number of things you can do on the edit side also there are a number of things you can do with the cells and with other things a view you can adjust how your screen 
Oh, we'll look, we'll look like, and so on. This one adding a cell. If I want to add a cell on top of this one, I can come here and go insert above. So it comes above that one. Yeah. Or I can have it below that one. Yeah. And these are managing running the cell. If I want to run only this cell, I don't like control enter. I go there and say run. It runs. Yeah. And the kernel, you didn't need to touch it, but this is the operating system running uh, the system. You can stop it if it hangs by clicking interrupt or shut down and all those things you can do. And this here data, if you want to upload data, to your application, you have Excel sheet, you have other things, you come here and click upload and you upload it. So this is basically how the Jupyter Notebook works and how you can access it. But we'll come back to this into the class, we'll have some assignments to do. Now assume I give you an assignment to work on and you worked on, you came here, sorry, you cloned mine you created a clone and you started working on it and later you want to send it back to me basically you need to select it and click share uh, get the URL and send it to me by email or we can have on BBLearn uh, assignment you go there and add it you can also have this option to publish it on Twitter if you want share Facebook or you can embed this one into another HTML or send it by email as, as we just uh, said. And this is the way it works uh, uh, on Jupyter Notebook. So I hope you have a good idea about it and you get ready on Thursday to experience this one and do more work. Thank you.